morning and welcome to you all. Thank you for joining us on this snowy morning here in Pendleton. It's a joy to have you. Um, just a few things I want to say at the beginning of the service. If you haven't, if you weren't here last week, just a reminder that the um, announcements and the passing of the peace will happen at the end of the service. So if you're expecting a little pause and it doesn't happen, that is what we planned. Um, God be with you, everybody who's watching online as well. Uh, let's rise now for our confession and forgiveness, please. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed, Blessed be, be God's, God's name, name forever. forever. Beloved, now is the time to wake from sleep. Let us confront our sins and confess them to the one who is merciful and just. God of new beginnings, we confess that we have not welcomed your holy reign. We have strayed from your paths. We prepare for war instead of peace. We dishonor one another and your creation. Purify us with your refining fire and set us again on your way of love, that we may bear fruit worthy of repentance and welcome your coming among us. Amen. People of God, a new thing is growing in our midst, a tender branch, a living sign. By water and the Spirit you are joined to this wonder. You have put on Christ and your sins have been washed away. Rejoice in the way of the Lord. Amen. We sing now our opening dialogue. Jesus Christ, light of life, shine.
be seated. Would the children please come forward? How are we all doing today? You still want to light? You got the light last week. I'm, we're going to let somebody else light this week. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I want to talk to you. This, this week is actually our peace week. So what is peace? We're going to talk a little bit about peace. That's part of it. Yeah, not waging wars. That's good. What else? What does peace look like? What do you think? Yeah, I think that's right. Being actively being kind to one another. What else? Yeah, yeah, helping those people that don't have everything they need, right? Helping, helping out. I like that, using helping hands. What do you got here? Being calm. Actually, yeah, that's part of it. It's, it's hard to, to see that people need help. It's hard to help people. It's hard to do much of anything when you're not calm. What do you got, buddy? Saying nice words. Yeah, saying nice words. That's good. Our, our kind words make a big difference. They really affect people. They help us all to stay calm and nice, right? Have you guys ever had a moment where you didn't feel any peace? You felt like you were mad? Yes, it happens. Yes, yes. <laughs> Me too. I've gotten mad too. And it, what does it feel like when you're mad, right? Is it, is it easy to think or is it hard to think? Yeah, what do you think about? You just think about how mad you are, right? Not always when you're mad? Sometimes you're thinking clear as it can be when you're mad? I'm skeptical. <laughs> okay, well, what do you think about when you're mad? I guess we kind of talked about that. What do you, like... Oh, see, that's part of it, too. When you're mad, it's hard to calm down sometimes, right? You're thinking about, i got to calm down, but you're too mad to calm down. And sometimes, yeah, yeah, you, when you're so mad, you can cry. Absolutely. So, I mean, that's one of the challenges we all have. If we want to pursue peace, we have to push those things away, right? We've got to get rid of those ideas. We've got we to get rid of the clutter in our brains and our hearts and allow peace to take over, right? So how do we do that together? I think we do it by all the things we already talked about, by being kind, by showing love, by offering help when people need help, right? All those things, they help us to remember that peace is the most important thing. And a peace is just another way to say, I love you, to anybody, to everybody. When we offer them peace, we're saying, I love you just like God loves us all. And that's an important thing. All right, let's say a quick prayer, and then we'll light the candles. Who wants to light the candles? All right. <laughs> All right, you're going you're gonna to you're lie for us, all right? So let's pray. Dear God, we want to say thank you for the gift of peace, for those moments in our lives and in our hearts where we can let go of all the things that distract us, the anger, the, the regret, the pain, the, the distractions, those things that take us away from you, from that peace and that love for one another. Help us to find that place and to know that that's what you call us to. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, everybody else can go sit back down. Amos, you want to come on up? Uh, if you'd all please sing the first two verses of Light One Candle. Together, let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, nurture our growth as people of repentance and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We come now to our lesson.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Your reading this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God. If you'd please rise now for the gospel canticle. to you, you O oh Lord. Lord. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, 
the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him, and all the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. We have a couple of seemingly contradictory images for our text this morning. We've got the Isaiah passage, which speaks of the little child that will lead them. Uh, Christians, of course, as early as, well, the disciples of Christ reckoned that child to be Jesus. Christians today continue to do that. Of course, Jews don't quite agree, but that's all right. We've got this image in Isaiah of the peaceable kingdom, it's sometimes called, where the the wolf will lie down with the lamb and the children can play on the asp's den. And it's it's just a beautiful vision of all of creation in harmony, right? We we see that sense. That's what the, the writer of Isaiah is going for. He's going for peace between all peoples, between all creatures, the world in harmony where no one is victimized and no one, no one needs to die for another, Right? And Christ, the little child that leads them, is the one, well, is the end of that victimization, I think is a good way to put it. The final sacrifice, the final thing that needs to be consumed for us. It's kind of an interesting way to look at it, and I like the bookend of that image. Christ is the final sacrifice for us all. But peace is an elusive concept. It's hard for us to grasp. It's hard for us to hold on to as human beings, right? I mean, we have periods of peace, peace in our hearts, peace in our lives, but it doesn't, it doesn't seem to stay. This is the challenge that we have. We, we fight for it. We fight about it. We fight about being peaceful, right? I can't tell you how often I've heard that we have to fight in order to achieve peace, which I understand the concept. I really do, but it seems weird at the same time, right? Peace is something we all want, something that really binds all people together in an interesting way. Everybody, when you discuss it with them, when you get down to the heart of it, everybody really wants peace, right? I I don't think there's a person on earth that kind of doesn't like the idea, the image of what we see in Isaiah, the fact that everybody can live in harmony, that everybody can have enough, that no one is victimized, no one is oppressed, no one is left out or left with not enough, right? Right? We, we see that idea, and if you ask anybody of any persuasion, I think they'll agree that they like that idea, that that is something that they will strive for. Even if they are somebody you would disagree with about everything else, we all want the same thing when it comes down to the heart of it, right? We all want that peace. We want that well-being. We want that, that nurturing image of God taking care of all of us. And it's kind of funny, kind of ironic, kind of sad that we fight about how we get that, right? Rather than finding peace, we argue about how we're going to make peace, right? Rather than saying, we're going to let this stuff go and just live in harmony together, we're going to say, no, you're going to find peace the way I say you have to find peace. And if you don't, well, I'm going to beat you up. I mean, of course, I'm being facetious, but that's kind of the idea. These are the things that we argue about. We argue about getting our way and having things happen the way we want them to happen because we think that's the only way we can achieve peace. It's sort of the irony of building peace. We have to fight about it to get it? It doesn't quite make sense, but it's what we keep trying. Maybe it's no wonder we haven't quite achieved world peace. And then we have John the Baptist, right? John the Baptist is an interesting figure. He's very much 
striking the pose of the prophets of old. The camel hair, the, the wide belt, the fur, the living in the wilderness, the, the locusts and honeys. He's hearkening back to the old prophets so that people will listen to them. And he's offering people peace too, but in a different way. It's more of an individual peace, of course. But he's offering them a repentance of sin so that they can find peace in their hearts. But he is not mincing words. He is saying, if you want to have this peace, especially to those scribes and those Pharisees, you have to let the old stuff go. You have to let the fire burn the chaff. You're a brood of vipers. You are the opposite of the peaceable kingdom that we see in Isaiah. You are the ones biting the children and you don't even realize it. But if you are willing, if you are able, let that stuff burn away in the fire. And then maybe you can repent and you can find that peace. Because that's the trick, right? Of any mess, of any struggle, of any... I don't know, business we've gotten ourselves tangled up in. Let me take a step back. Let me say it this way, I think. Have you ever noticed how easy it is to look at a friend, to look at a neighbor, to look at a stranger and say, all they have to do is stop doing such and such or get rid of this, right? Or stop being distracted by this. Or if they want to clean up their house, they just have to stop buying little things and then they're done and they're good. It's so easy to see that in other people. But then for ourselves, it's a little harder, right? We see the things that surround us, and we, we know the stories of those things. We know how we got them, how hard it was to get them, and how hard it is to let those things go, right? This is true for individuals. It's true for families. It's true for institutions. We have things that we want to hold on to, and we don't want to let go. We don't want to repent. We don't want to relent in our vision, in our image, in what we had hoped for in that thing, in that item, in that idea. It doesn't even have to be stuff. It can be ideas in our heads that clutter us. Concepts and visions and hopes and dreams that sometimes we just can't let go of. And our minds get cluttered, our lives get cluttered, our homes get cluttered. I think that's really what John the Baptist is talking about when he's talking about the chaff and the unquenchable fire. Because if we can't let go of that stuff that gets us distracted, we're going to be feeling the heat. And I want to remind you once again that when we hear a lot of these Old Testament images of fire and burning, it's not about hellfire, but it's about that refiner's fire. That fire that burns away all of the impurities and hopefully leaves us pure and whole. Obviously, that's what John the Baptist, well, obvious to me. That's what John the Baptist is talking about because he's offering a forgiveness of sins through baptism. He wants people to be made pure and clean. And sometimes it burns when we get purified, right? The ancient world really understood that because that's how sometimes they would clean out a wound, right? Use an ember not a, or salt or whatever it was. That burns. It hurts to let go of that If you want to be dramatic, that corruption, that infection, that idea that we can't let go of, that item that haunts our homes, whatever it is, the baptismal font that a church just can't get rid of, it it could be anything. It's no wonder it's so hard for us to find peace in our hearts and in our worlds because there are so many things we have a hard time letting go of. Think about the division in our own nation, right? We've got different groups who really want the same thing, but they disagree on how to get there, and neither side, neither, no political orientation can let go of things in order to just say, all right, let's forget about all this, and let's start doing it. Nobody wants to do that. I understand that. That's what, it, that's what the refiner's fire is all about. That's what the repentance of sins is all about. Letting go of those things and those ideas and those pains and those losses and finding the peace that's on the other side. Entering into that peaceable kingdom, yeah, there's peace there, but it's a painful journey. Repentance, repentance is not something that just happens, right? Forgiveness of sins is not something that just happens it's something we have, to, we have to declutter our lives in order to achieve, right? To use more modern parlance. I don't know about you, but my office right now is a terrible, terrible mess. Like, there's nowhere to sit. I mean, my desk I can kind of sit at. And I will blame the holiday season for most of it, because part of it is there's a Christmas tree in there. But I could get rid of most of that. But I don't want to. And so I 
have very little peace in my office right now. Maybe you understand that. Maybe at the end of the season, I will be able to repent of all that stuff and get rid of a few things, yeah? And next year, there will be a little more peace in my life, a little more room in my office, a little more hope for the future. I don't know what, what baggage you might be holding on to, whether it's an idea, whether it's a thing, whether it's a hope or a dream even. If it's time, let it burn away because peace will be waiting for you. That's God's promise and that's our gift. Amen. I'd like to invite you now to please rise for the hymn of the day. There's a voice in the wilderness. Let's sing together. come now to our litany of prayers. Please sing and pray with us.
be seated. We come now to our offering hymn. Eternal God, you make the desert bloom and send springs of water to thirsty ground. Receive these simple gifts of bread and wine and money and make us messengers of your mercy and love for all in need of your healing and justice. We ask this through Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. We come now to our great thanksgiving. If you'd please rise as you're able. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right to give our, our thanks, thanks and praise. praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer through whom you will also make all things new, in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. mighty and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, gave thanks, and, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, 
gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. In that great task of seeking peace and sharing it with one another, let us pray as Christ taught us with our sung Lord's Prayer. As Peace Lutheran Church, all people are welcome at the Lord's table. So as soon it is prepared, as it is prepared, I'll invite you to come forward. If I could have my helpers come forward.
Let us pray. Faithful God, in this meal you have remembered your mercy, bringing heaven to earth in the body and blood of Christ. As we wait for the day when all your promises will be fulfilled, sustain us and strengthen us by this holy mystery. Guide us toward your promised future, coming to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Thank you. We have a few announcements this morning. The, the first one is, I want to say a really big thank you to everybody who made the, uh, the Bell sale such a success yesterday. It was a lot of fun if you came by. Good cookies, good food, good, uh, good fun to be had by all. And I know a lot of people put a lot of effort into it, and I really appreciate it. Um, it really helps to get uh, people connected with a church that we maybe wouldn't normally connect with. So it's wonderful. I really appreciate all of that work. And there's still a few cookies left, so if you weren't able to come yesterday... I think there's a few left over. You might get a chance to buy some. Um, uh, another announcement is next week, of course, is our children's Christmas program. So if you are a children, please come. If you are not a children, please come. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. Um, we're going to do it kind of in the same way we did last year. It's a little less formal, so be ready to get up and participate a little bit more. Um, but it's a lot of fun. And uh, we, well, hopefully we have a little less snow and it's a little less intimidating for our people traveling. But uh, it's, a, it's always a joy. Um, I also want to say, I think I'm going to nix the adult forum this morning, um, we, just because it's supposed to keep snowing and I don't want anybody to get nervous. So there will be no adult forum, instead buy cookies. How's that? Does that sound good? Buy cookies, eat, drink coffee, enjoy one another's company. Um, I also want to say a big thanks for the youth who were selling coffee during the sale, all of those volunteers. Uh, thank you very much for your efforts. All right, any other announcements for the good of the people? All right, let's uh, then please rise for our blessing and dismissal. Let us pray. God, the eternal word who dwells with us in Jesus and holds us in, excuse me, and who holds us in the grace of the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn is on the next page, of course. It is Fling Wide the Door. Let's sing together with joy. Serve the Lord.
Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.